everybody, I have a great team talk for you today. If you can believe it, I've got this guy sitting next to me. Um, this is Mike. First question, say your last name because I've heard it four different ways. Ooh, in Wisconsin, it's Brigham. Okay. Illinois? Brugan. Down south, like Florida, Alabama? Brugan. <laughs> <laughs> Is it truthfully Brigan? It is Brigan. Okay, yeah. all right. So there we go. We have Mike Brigan with us today on our team talk, and this is going to be about the truth. The truth about fishing in the industry, boats, fishing, Mike, everything Mike. This is about Mike today, if you can believe this, because I don't know that you've ever done a video like this, have you? I have not. Okay, so this is going to be good. I hope you're excited. It's going to start right now. Here we go. All right, Mike. Say hi, introduce yourself. Tell them what you do, tell them your career, tell them your fishing, tell them what you fish, and then we'll get into some stuff. I'm Mike Brigham. I'm from La Crosse, Wisconsin. I grew up close to here on a dairy farm. I fish BFLs, I fish local tournaments. I fish as much as I can and still maintain a full-time job and a regular life like most people. So you work and fish? Yes, I work and fish. Work and fish, okay, cool. Um, if you guys don't know Mike, just type him in, you'll find him. You'll see what his accolades are in this area and I guess nationally. Um, very, very high, high quality fisherman, high end fisherman. Um, Mike has been a customer of mine forever. I mean, like forever. Yes, yeah, forever. forever. Um, Mike's broke down. I, he's one of these guys, like I talk about, that when you take care of me, I take care of you. We've done mm -hmm. side of the river, we've done 3 a.m., we've done 5 a.m., we've done over the phone stuff, that type of stuff. But he's nice enough to be here because we're going to tell you about the truth. We're going to ask Mike some questions. We're going to get into some fishing. We're going to get into boats. We're going to talk about equipment. We're going to do everything Mike. So. Um, what made you get into fishing to begin with? Why did you like bass fishing? Why is it bass fishing? It's always been any type of fishing, fishing. from when I was way too young to like it. I've always liked it a sick amount. Like, because you're from a dairy farm? Like you grew up on yeah, a Yeah, and my dad didn't tournament fish. All we did is right. ice fish during Christmas, Christmas break, really, in grade school. But ever since then, I just fished a lot. Fished. So you just got the addiction. Yep. Like a drug, just an addiction. You needed to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you still do do it. Yep. I always had to catch more bluegills than the guy sitting on the pail next to me, and it never died. There you go. That's how it ends up. All right, that leads into tournament fishing. Um, I remember this guy when he had a, a skeeter with a 150 Merc. Is that what we started with? Yep, I had two skeeters. What about the black one? I had a Hydra Sport first. Yeah, yeah. And then two skeeters. Yeah. And then you started moving into some higher end stuff. And then a ranger, yep. Yep, then you stayed ranger for a long time. Yep. Okay, good. Um, BFLs, what drives you into BFL? Why do you go BFL? Why do you fish that level? So, so he, like what Mike said, he is basically what I think most of our viewership is around the country, around the world. He is not at, well, let's just say pro level. You're not spending eight grand to get into tournaments. Mm -hmm. But let's just say, do you, what do you consider yourself? Just an everyday um, fish. It just you'll fish any tournament, right? No, more than every day because my goal is to profit money for right. sure, which is very difficult to do. But living in Lacrosse, we have enough BFLs here, which have enough contingency and payout to where I can justify fishing often in that circuit. But without that circuit, I wouldn't have contingent money, and I won't. I don't know why I'd have to make decisions. I guess. Okay. So, so that's basically what goes on here. Now, this this leads us into some more questions and some more things. So when you're saying contingent money, you're saying money that you win from winning or when money that sponsors give you? What What are we talking about here? It's mainly boat money is what I'm searching for. And it started with Ranger Cup and it continued with Ranger Cup, which changed from $2,000, but your boat could be as old as it, it didn't matter how old your boat was. And then it went to a four year shelf life. So you had to buy a boat every four years to be able to win 7,000, prefer a win. You had to win to actually get paid that money. And there's other companies, TH Marine and whatnot, that have contingent money, but that's the extra money that's the only way it's possible to, to truly profit. And you can love the sport and not, not everyone's gonna be able to profit. And some people probably have more fun with it than I do, even though they lose money, and that's fine too, but that's where I'm at with it. You're in it to be on stage, get the check. You have to, well, you, you have to. There's people richer, wealthier than me that can afford to just do it for fun. And I probably could too, but it's not, it, yeah, I, I, if anybody doesn't understand where you're going, it's like, I put myself in Mike's shoes. If I'm going to fish, even when I did fish, I figured it was either first or nothing. And if anything mm -hmm. outside of that, it's like, yep. okay, yeah, I got paid, but you don't make money at that. Mm -hmm. You don't, you can't. Yep. You may get that second place check that's two grand, but at the end of the day, it's not enough. It, it can't be. 
you got gas, you got insurance, you got boat repairs. No, so you're going to lose in the long run. You can't be call yourself a professional carpenter and lose fifteen thousand a year. You're not a professional. Correct. Exactly. That's exactly right. And so that's just what we talk about right there. Mm -hmm. So when you're on the plus side of things, things are then you are a professional. You are achieving what your goals are. You're becoming the, mm -hmm. the level of fisherman that you set out to be at yeah. the beginning of the year, yeah. which is being on stage, getting the first place check, getting the hardware, moving on and getting contingency money. And so you win five grand for first, and then there's the seven grand on top of it. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's what we're talking about here. This is what why we have this guy here. So you guys can understand this a little bit more about contingency monies and that type of thing, which leads me into the next question. Ranger guy for many years. Mm -hmm. Many years. Mm -hmm. Changed brands this year. Yes. New boat. Yep. New ride. Yep. Sponsored. Nope. Wrote a check. Yep. Writes a check. Who are your sponsors? None, really. <laughs> there you go. None, really. Paying for everything on your own. Mm -hmm. I mean, you make friends and you try to save some money by get things at cost, but right. that's all you can. They're not giving it to you. No. They're not here. No. Here's your boat, Mike. Yep. There you go. And here's a check. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> here's your boat, here's your check. And, and and so I remember back a long time ago when there was, I don't know, do you say no one was beating Mike? There was a window there. You can honestly say I mean, that. I'd overall win most divisions that right. fished. Yeah. Right, right. Points wise. And that was two years, three years ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, okay. And I'm sure you had offers. You had to have offers. You had to have some sort of offers come through. Yeah, sponsorship yeah real weak ones that essentially offered me nothing but junk at cost and they wanted you to do shows or do stuff yep, or yep. spend time at shows um x amount of x amount of social media which when it boiled down came to about four dollars an hour and i didn't want to do it four dollars an hour i mean that's a guess but it yeah right much. yeah well, it let's give you a pay raise six bucks <laughs> So you don't want to go work for six bucks an hour? No, I no. can do without standing at Walmart for <laughs> five hours. All right, yeah. So, um, so that, there you go. That's why we don't have any sponsors on board. Because, um, I mean, you're talking about probably most one of the most premium fishermen to come out of this area. I would say I put you at the same close level as Tom. Tom's really the only pro pro we've got that comes out of this area. Do yeah, agree? Me, and, me and Tom have been duking it out for years. Right. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, there you go. So, we're, but you're doing it on your money. He's actually doing most of it on his own money, mm -hmm. too. Right. Because of the same thing that you just said. Yep. It is exactly what you just said. He doesn't want to go stand at Bass Pro or Cabela's and talk about this. And, and why wouldn't he pay you a fair rate to do that when someone else will do it for nothing? Correct. Because they think it's cool. Right, right, right. Because they think it's cool. Because they're... There he is. That's the guy. Mm -hmm. No, it's not really the guy. Um, so, which leads me into, uh, like we are talking about your boat selection this year. Your boat selection is? A nitro. Yeah. I'm, we're good. We're good. We are still friends. We're good. Trust me. <laughs> but the reason being, you've never owned a nitro. No. No. Never sat I've one. never even driven one. <laughs> <laughs> never. Yeah, just going with it. Just going with it. But the reason being, I think it was about 19 grand cheaper than any other option. Yep. Nah, I shouldn't say that. There's some closer, but then staying in a Ranger, it was about 19,000 cheaper. Okay. And what about contingency money? Is there contingency money there with the Nitro? Yep. Anything White River owns is exactly the same. So doesn't matter. Ranger, Nitro. Right. So it all pays the same to win out of. Why would you run a Ranger when you can run a Nitro if you're going to win? Right? Yeah. And the shelf life is only five or four years anyway. No so problem. I'm assuming it's going to be fine in four years. Hopefully. <laughs> and how much we got to <laughs> put back together. You never know what we'll have to put right. back together. As long as the trailer makes it up and down the road, you'll be fine. No. And I'll probably lose some of that 19 on that back end because it'll be worth less probably, but. We'll see. Who knows? I mean, there's guys. There's no way to guess it. There's no way to guess it. You're exactly right. So you got 19 grand in your pocket off the bat, which is obviously a huge boost. It's a huge boost for everything. If, if people are doing the math right now, which there probably no one is, because I don't know what goes on <laughs> inside of there. But you're starting the year off with 19 extra thousand dollars in your pocket, essentially, because you're riding in a nitro. No matter how you slice it. Yes. It, yes. 19 grand in your yes. pocket, and that's huge. I mean, that's huge. Yep. So. 
And with the, like you said, the White River contingency money, so you're still up to win the seven grand or whatever it is. You got the Merc on the back, mm -hmm. obviously. You run TNH stuff, probably. Mm -hmm. Everything he can to get that contingency money is, boom, coming out. So if there, if there's another brand that we, let's talk about like what we talked about before. I mean, you made the comment when it came down to, uh, if you had to pick a boat. If it came down to picking a boat, getting in a boat, getting in a tournament, what boat would it be? I would, if they were all the same, I'd run a gambler for sure. Like same price, if everything, yeah. everything yeah. comes in at $65,000. Yep. If the numbers were the same. At the same price, I wouldn't run a gambler because I wouldn't get to contingency money. Right. But with an average of whatever, three quarters of a win a year at $7,000 a win, it would have to be like 35,000 cheaper right. to be neutral. Correct. And so, yeah, right, there we go. So if it comes down to it, you're gonna sit in a gambler. You're gonna put what troll motor on the front? Mint What, Coda, what yeah. electronics? Humminbird. Um, Merc motor. Mm -hmm. Jack Blake. Atlas. Probably Atlas, Bob's. yeah. Atlas, yeah. okay. Um, so we open on tournament day, we get in the boat, and you go into a tournament pre-fishing how many days? Oh, a, a BFL or anything that's yeah. anything that'll pay more than five thousand, I'll fish for four or five days. <laughs> so you want to win, obviously. If it pays, if it a pays. team tournament, I'll fish a half a day. It's right. fine. Right, right, yeah. So if it's getting yes, yeah, so there you go. Going back to being paid, going back to being on stage, going back to the ultimate goal, mm -hmm. which is not to sit at Bass Pro and talk about Jimmy's web wiggler. It's to go win mm -hmm. and win at your pace and win at your level. Mm -hmm. Tournament day where I'm in the boat with Mike. I've never done that, but I'm in the boat with Mike. I open up the rod lockers. You know what's in there? Yeah, I know what's in there. How many? 15, 20. Okay. Tackle. Over tackle or just what you need? What, what do you run? Just what I need because I run a practice boat, an aluminum boat mm -hmm. all week. Right. So. You know coming in what the deal is. Mm -hmm. You know what you're gonna be doing. You know what your tactics are. You know what you're gonna do. You know your spots, everything's figured out. You probably have your run. Most of the time, does the run go well? And I say the run, start spot. You got second, third spot, finish spot, whatever. Yeah, it usually goes well. Yeah. What do you mean? There you go. <laughs> well, is, is, there a, is there ever a bump in the road for Mike? Not that many. There you go. <laughs> so most of the time it goes as planned. Yeah. Most time but it takes a lot of years to make that plan correct. Correct. Years of river knowledge or fishing knowledge? Both, equally. Equally. They're yeah. both the same. Yeah. And if we get to a lake or reservoir, same style stuff. Does Mike, does Mike grab a map and look at a map, or does Mike go and look online, look at the lake, look at the layout? What, is, what does Mike do? It looks at what m most people are going to be doing and then try to do it differently. Well, definitely do it differently, but it might not work. Right, right. So you, you go to something new, it takes you three, four days to figure something out? I, if, I, if you can't figure it out in three and a half days, you're usually not going to figure it out. You should go home? Eh, don't go home, don't, don't quit, but if, if, a, if a bell don't go off in three and a half days, it usually don't go off. All right, so out here, if we're going fishing in the spring of the year, you don't got to indulge what you do, but what, 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 do, what does a bass do on the, in the river in the winter? What, what, why, what happens? What, what? In the winter time? Yeah, so they, they winter. They go to winter, right? They get together in big groups. I don't know. Okay, and then comes spring. The big ones leave for them groups. <laughs> <laughs> and then we come into summer. And what's your favorite time of year to fish? Spring, summer, fall, winter, what? Probably spring. Spring. Pretty spawn, yeah. But spring I have spring. one more in the summer. Oh, yeah, we, everybody knows it. Yeah. That June-ish area, yeah. July is much, much Historically fun. on rising water in July, I'm rough to beat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so back to the industry now. We're kind of bobbing back and forth, trying to keep everybody in tune with what's going on, fishing, industry, fishing, industry. Um, let's go back to the Skeeter days. Can we go back to those Skeeter days and talk a little bit about some Skeeter? Because when you originally came into my shop, like for the first time, I think you were, you were coming in when Danny was there. Yes. Yes. And that was Skeeter days, right? That was Hector Sport mm -hmm. Skeeter days. Yeah. Um, when you bought your first bass boat, your, that was the Hyper Sport. Mm -hmm. How long did we have that boat? How long did we have that thing? One year. One year. Then you went to the black and blue Skeeter, correct? Nine, 98 Skeeter, yep. Yeah, I bought that on the road. With an down, XR6. Down that bottom prairie sheet. 
or something, yep. right? Yep. Right. Um, at that point, did you set out to be where you are now? Did you know that's what you wanted to do? Were you the same then that you are now? Or where did the, at, at what level and age did we get to like, I really want to win everything I try to fish? Well, for the first five or six years, it was easy because I was still learning river and everything was like new and interesting. Learning it's funner than relearning it. Right, uh, yeah, okay, I get where you're going, for sure. For so sure. it was more, honestly, it was more enjoyable then. Learning it, Yeah. learning the river, yeah. learning fish, understanding, uh -huh. that type of stuff. Yep. So then after that, then comes the competitiveness, probably. Once you up. taste blood, that's all you want. Right, yeah, yeah. once you get that first, I want to keep yep. doing it. Yep. Which leads into bigger and better things. And you go into a bigger boat, you get into a faster boat, mm -hmm. and you start buying more electronics, bigger electronics, more equipment, la di da di da which then evolves into what you're doing today. Mm -hmm. um, on, a, on, a, on a year, on a yearly deal, yearly deal, how much does Mike spend in fishing? Entry fees, just give me a rough number. 8,000. In entry fees and in tackle and in that type of stuff? Yeah, probably 6,000 in them categories. Okay. Yeah. So you're like at 8,000, 6,000, somewhere mm -hmm. in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't got to indulge full numbers, but I mean, so if we've got 8,000 in entry fees, you win one at five and you get your contingency money, you're ahead, then, mm -hmm. right? So yep. now you've, you've already sprung ahead. Yeah, but it, you, yeah, you got to tread water during regular season and make money in the fall in championships. Right, right. Everything's built around championships, yep. essentially. Yep, you got to be able to compete in Fort Madison, Kentucky Lake. Watch it talk. Once in a while, you got to cash checks and championships to make money with a bass ball. Okay, good. Um, so there you go, people. There's that too. Um, and there's people sitting right there right now thinking that they do it at a high level, but I don't know that when I say a high level, you may fish every tournament in the world, you may fish everything you got, but if you're not checking and you're not getting the plaque or the trophy, you're not doing it. Am I wrong? I mean, you're trying to do it, but you're not. It doesn't doing mean it. you shouldn't be doing it. I understand that. They might have more fun than the people that are winning. <laughs> At the end of the day, right? Some of it's got to be about fun. Does it? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I know where you're going with that. I know where you're going because I, there's people sitting behind there right now. They've never probably cashed a check, but they still do it every day. Mm -hmm. How the hell does that? How, how do how do you get drive? I mean. I didn't win a lot of tournaments, but I won a fair amount yep. around here yep. when I was fishing hard. Um, but it, it bothered me after after you start winning, then you start not winning. It was like a balancing point for me. It's like, I can't do this back here at the level and do that. Yep. And it bothered me, but there's there's some people there that have never done it, but are still trying to pound the f door down. It's gotta, it's gotta do some, dwelling mentally, financially, physically. I mean, in my life it would have. I mean, what the f I can come here. I can come here on Saturday and wrench and make more money than I can do go out there. Everyone's wired differently. I understand this, but <laughs> f me, at the end of the day, it's like, no, I can't, I can't do that. I always used to base it around that. After I started doing this, it was like, what do I, what's first place in a tournament? All right, let's say it's five grand. I'm not gonna win contingency money because I'm never gonna do that. Mm -hmm. So I gotta make, I gotta be able to make five grand. Can I do that if I go fish a tournament? Me? No, I can't do that. Nope. I'm not gonna win. Flat out, not gonna win. I mean, I may be around it, but I'm not gonna win. A, because there's like you, and there's Tommy, and there's, there, I can go through the list. Your brother, I can, there's mm -hmm. a list. There's a list that I'm gonna have to battle. I, I, I don't wanna do that. Yep. So I can sit right here and I can go to work and I can work five days and I know I'm gonna make five grand. But that means you don't love bass fishing. Correct, there you go. That's, that's what I'm the getting. difference. That's the difference, yeah. you're exactly right. Where you're gonna go fishing. You're mm -hmm. gonna go pre-fishing, you're gonna work and go pre-fishing yep. every day. Yep. If, if that's how it needs to be, mm -hmm. right? You're gonna work and then go pre-fishing. Work, go pre-fish, work, pre-fish. Do what you need to do. Yep. But then you got the guys that come here on Wednesday or Tuesday or even Monday that don't work and they pre-fish all week and then they get their ass kicked by you or butt kicked by you. So, well, sometimes. Yeah, no, it happens. Don't it don't, don't lie, it, it happens. I, we've all witnessed it. What are you getting at? I'm not getting at. <laughs> the point is, is that you're doing it the way it should be done, is what I'm saying. Because you're working and fishing but you're doing it without sponsorships. You're doing it, I, do you call it grassroots? Is that what you call it? I think you'd call it that, yeah, but I don't see any other option. There's 300 boats that fish the opens. Right. 
that payout's terrible unless you got some pipe dream of using dad's money to fish the elites. What are you doing? Right. Right. No. Right. I, yeah. Yeah. Right. That's that's what we want to hear. That's what we want to hear. I mean, if that is your dream and you got the money behind you, go for it. But for a working man, that don't really work <laughs> the <Right>. best. <laughs> <laughs> because you got to go do what you do every right. day to get a check on Friday. But yeah, that's exactly so. You, and that's what I want people to understand. This is he's grassroots. He does it. He works. He fishes. It's not like he doesn't work. I mean, he goes to a job every day. Does what he needs to do and then goes fishing and does it at a high level. So that that's that's definitely possible and he does it when it comes to the industry, when it comes to the boats, when it comes to doing, he's purchasing his own boat, he's purchasing his boat to win money. Yeah, it is possible, but the fisherman could do, when a team tournament pays back 49%, 48% at the ramp and people still continue to fish those tournaments, that hurts the sport. That's what brings it down. Yeah. Fishermen have to, look out for themselves a little better than they do. Right. And right. they're like two tournaments at a ramp on a Saturday, one of them 20 boats, one of them 13 boats, and and one of them pays more than the other. Why would they want, why would the lesser tournament have any boats? Correct. Like it happens all the time. I see it everywhere. Tear your $70,000 equipment up for a grand. Mm -hmm. Right. For a grand. Right. And you get to come see me on And Monday. so the director can go home with more money than the guy who got second place. <laughs> Like what? Right, right. Yeah, and it, it happens. But people don't it do happens, the math. It happens, but can you blame the director? No. If people are still showing up, but you can't even blame the no, director. No, no, Because he's done it for 10 years yeah, or five years. It's working. Right. <laughs> and people just do it. And the fact you're exactly right. Yeah. That, that's, that is probably the dead evil of the industry. Stupidity? No, not that. I'm saying, <laughs> it, well, maybe. That, that's <laughs> everywhere, though. But the fact of the matter is, is that you, you the fishermen don't take the time to figure out where the best things are to go participate in. Right, right. Right? Yeah, 100%. Because if, if there's a tournament that's going to pay here in the cross, it's going to pay 49% at the ramp or 48%, and there's a tournament down in Prairie that's going to pay 70%, Mike's probably going to drive to Prairie. Drive to Prairie every time. Every yeah. time. Yes. Every time. Yep. You're not just going to fish your backyard just because you can catch fish here. Even if I have a less chance of winning. Right. It's justice at that point. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the truth, people. That's what we're talking about here. That's the truth about the industry. Um, and there's a lot going on with, and I don't want to get into the professional side of things when I say the professionals, um, because there's they drive the industry up and down. They you know they they do a very good job at selling what they need to sell. Mm -hmm. They really do. Yeah. They really do a good job. The, the pros do. Um, and I think they're marketed very well. They're, they're, they use their platforms very well and they convince, I don't know if they convince 20% of the people they're doing good and they do more than that. I bet you, I bet you they're convincing rates, probably 50% of the people that watch them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I know for a fact that the frog that you made a bunch of money on didn't cost you a lot of money for many years. Correct? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's you weren't spending 10 bucks a frog nope. i know that no nope. and you know i see him in your boat whether or not you're leaving him there to try to make me think that was the deal or whatever it was i mean it's not like a search for your boat but you leave him out it's, you'll never know <laughs> <laughs> but i i've heard rumored that that was probably the the one that did really well um and so it's and you just did that on your own you probably bought it because it was the cheapest back then it was what you could afford and what you could do it was the easiest to trick out, yeah. Right, Yeah. right, it was the easiest, right. So I think when it comes down to that stuff, it leads you into the next question when it comes to sponsorships. So if, if, if I'm making up Bill's lures here, he's gonna give you lures, Mike, he's gonna pay you 10 grand, you don't have to go to any, any expos, you're gonna pay you 10 grand to use his lure and you don't like it, would you do it? Yeah, but he better listen to me on adjustments. Okay. So, Which would be why he's paying me in the first place. It should be, right? right. It should right. be. It should be. You should have to make the adjustments to make his. Yep. So, and that leads back to some of the things that we've done in this video series that people watch when I call out industries, people in this industry. I'm just saying that you should adjust this to make it better for the consumer. Mm -hmm. And that would be the justice why you, if Bill's, Bill's frogs give you frogs, $10,000 and all the frogs you want, and you look at it and say, this is a piece of shit, but I'll do it as I long as you. Say that. Yeah, you would. If you look at it and say this is a piece of shit, I'll do it if we change it, we start working together. Yeah. 
that would be you would do yes that, yeah yes. perfect so and that and that's that's more about the truth too i mean because when i'm what i'm getting at is there's a bunch of people out there chucking a bunch of stuff around that they don't believe in and they're doing it because they're getting paid but this guy that's grassroots that starts from the bottom and works every day would do that but you gotta let's make a quality product here for the consumer mm -hmm. Right for the consumer. Something I can stand behind. Something that you would yeah. honestly say, yes, I use this. Right, right. exactly, exactly. Um, you got anything else? You want to talk about anything else? You want to talk about boats, motors? You want to talk about anything? He watches the series, by the way. You like my series? Yeah, it cracks me up. <laughs> um, I don't. What's good about it? What's good about my series? Tell people what you like about my series. No, oh, just brutal honesty. I can't get enough of it. Can't get enough of it. Stepping on feet. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sometimes ones I shouldn't. But we deal with that, don't we, George? Yeah, we deal with that. But yeah, I mean, that, that, and that's why he's here, honestly. That's why I wanted him to come. I wanted you to hear the truth about what he does from the grassroots, because I don't do it. And you know, Tom's at a different level, but Tom fishes the same stuff you fish. If he's home, he's gonna fish the same Absolutely. stuff you fish. Yep. And that's for the same reason that you go fish. He wants to go fish. Mm -hmm. He wants to be on stage. He wants to get the hardware. Does he need any more? No. Do you need any more? Not really, but you do it because you love it and you want to go fishing. Right. And you want to win. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you don't want to win, because I know you do, because that's the only, the only damn reason you're there is to win. At this level, you have to be. Or quit. Or quit. That's where I'm at with it. Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. Win or quit. Yep. Yep. So there you go. I mean, that's the truth. That's the flat out truth about the industry. Since you don't have anything more you want to talk about, I don't know. I'm Nothing. good. You sure? I'm good. Positive? Quite positive. What? Colors are nitro. I think it's dark. Gray carpet. <laughs> yes. Did you get the drawer? I got. I did get the drawer. I think that was the only add-on I got. <laughs> are you gonna use the drawer? I don't know. <laughs> My buddy at Jetta said I had to. <laughs> I had to get the drawer. So Who I is got your it. buddy at Jetta? Toby Corn. <laughs> Toby. Yep. Here we go talking about Jetta. <laughs> Main yeah. salesman. Main salesman. You got huh? me. <laughs> <laughs> How did that conversation go? I was on the phone, he railing off. I said, I want it dark with light gray carpet. And he said, I got a nitro for you or what? Yeah. But you got to get the drawer? Got to get the drawer. And then he tried to talk me into the uh, nitro sticker on the front deck. I ixnayed that. <laughs> Why? I don't know, I thought it'd be slippery. <laughs> we put it in in our videos, don't we? Every time. <laughs> So why didn't you go with the sticker? I don't know, it was a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so they won't even put it in for you. You don't even get it for free. You gotta pay to f***ing advertise. I, I hope I get it. a hat. You're not getting a hat. You're still wearing your Ranger hat, I guarantee you. Toby, if you're watching, which I guarantee you will be, Mike wants a hat. Toby's watching. Mike yep. needs a hat. <laughs> get him a KVD sticker. <laughs> get you a KVD sticker for the back of your truck. Yeah, that's it. You watch a bunch of fishing on TV? Not as much as I used to. Yeah, it doesn't entertain you as much as I'm not sure to. what circuit to even watch. I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> the bass fishing world. <laughs> yeah, drone, 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 yep. out of control. Multi-billion dollar industry. Getting spread thin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the multi-billion dollar industry that we call fishing. Yup, yup. Well, I mean, that's the truth. That's the flat out truth right from Mike. Depends what portion of the country you're in, Brigham or Brugan. Yeah, they're both. They both work. They do. You respond to both. I do. Okay, good. Yep. So if you see him, it doesn't matter what his last name is. You can call him Brugan, Brigham. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. I've heard of both up here actually. Yeah. No one knows what the hell it is, but they do now. It's Brigham. We can make clear it up right now. It's Brigham. It's yeah. Brigham. Clear that sh up. The truth is Brigham. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody that's watching, it's Brigham. That's it. Did you finish? Did you finish behind Jacob Wheeler once? Yeah. In an All-American? At the All-American he won to go pro in, yeah. And you finished where? Uh, I don't know, top 10 somewhere. Yeah, he went pro after that. Mm -hmm. Never saw him again. Caught him on a stupid tube. <laughs> go figure. Go. <laughs> go figure. Go figure. Do you think all the pros love what they're riding in? Absolutely. You do? <laughs> Has nothing to do with just getting it for free, maybe? Yeah, it yeah. might have something. Okay, all right, all right. We're not going to get in depth with that. <laughs> but I know Jordan would really like us to get in depth with all of that. But he was nice enough to leave his fishing spot to come in here, 
talk to you people today and then you sick your brother on it and give your head mechanic all the walleyes and give my head mechanic all the walleyes mm -hmm. what a nice guy what a nice guy and give your brother the spot yeah don't say that because now if someone sees him out there they'll know they him. don't even know what he's in <laughs> it's not like he's in his g he's cool. i did give my brother the spot Correct. and he is catching him as we speak right so there you go yeah. that's the truth and no lie right there all right that's it as always Comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. Hey, back to the subscribe thing. This is kind of bothering me. Jordan and I did our analytic run. We have so many people commenting, so many people watching, and we have so little people subscribe. Right, I Jordan? have not subscribed. Prime example, right here, he is not subscribed. He just f***ing watches my stuff. I will tonight, I will, He just I watches I my promise. stuff and doesn't subscribe. <laughs> So here we go, we sit at this number and there's guys like him who just watch it. Just go down, Jordan, do we gotta make a video on how to subscribe? We could. We should, probably. Should we do that? Because it can't be, is it hard, Jordan? No. Okay, so, I mean, Jordan, we're gonna drop a video. So you know how to subscribe because we have so many views. We have we have views of like 100,000, like we should have 100,000 subscribers on our view chart compared to what we do. Our interactions higher than most. You guys are awesome. Every one of you are great. I'm not, I guess I am kind of ranting about it, but the fact of the matter is, is I need more subscribers. I need more subscribers. Click the subscribe button. Do what you need to do. What do you got to do? Create a Google account or do something? Type in your email and... Just have to have a Gmail account. Just have a damn Gmail account. There you go. Just make a Gmail account, subscribe. Everything will be happy. Andy will be happy. Jordan will, be, Jordan will get off my ass about talking about this. So just subscribe. Would you subscribe tonight? Yes, I will. You will? I'm going to ask him tomorrow. 30 He's, bucks. That, is that our bet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying you to do this. Just go subscribe. Everybody, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. All right? Make sure you do it. Go subscribe. Always comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Witness the madness. That is? Speed, money, no breaks. I'm out. See ya!